Hello, and welcome to Wall Street Training's Company Overview Module. The goal of this course, our Company Overview, is to build a very quick financial summary using historical results, analyst estimates, and basic assumptions for our projections. When you look at these numbers, you have now very quickly completed this entire file, this entire analysis here, from the three years of historicals to the three years of analyst projections and your own two years of very quick assumptions. What we will now do is direct our attention to the bottom and quickly enter in our capital structure and calculate some very quick capital, capital structure ratios from our balance sheet. So here at this moment, please turn your attention back to the Walmart information filing and you will flip to the first, second, third, fourth page, which is our balance sheet. Let's now quickly input our cash number. Our cash number is as follows. The last available year, cash and equivalents. It's going to be 6414. 6414. And let's make sure that we understand where that, again, that number came from, 6414. And you'll input that cell, that number, into our capital structure, very short, quick capital structure at the bottom of our file in cell F32. F32, you will say 6414. And now what we want to do is locate our total debt numbers. In cell F34, let's go and figure out what the three inputs to our debt numbers are by turning back to our balance sheet. When we turn back to our balance sheet on the liability side towards the bottom, we have these following numbers highlighted for you. Let's take a quick look at the labels first to make sure we understand which one of these debt numbers we actually want. And for more information on our debt explanation, please make sure you turn to our accounting and financial statement integration module as well as our corporate valuation module as well. The first section under our liability section, the first item under our liability section is commercial paper. That we definitely want to include is that it's extremely short-term funding for our working capital purposes. We do not want to include the next three items of accounts payable, accrued liabilities, and accrued income taxes. We do, however, clearly want to include the next item, total long-term debt due within one year. So that number we also want to include as well. We do not want to include capital leases. Again, for capital leases, although that may be considered a source of funding for valuation purposes, we do not want to include that in our corporate structure, in our capital structure. For, again, a detailed explanation of why we want to include or exclude capital leases, please turn to our corporate valuation module when we discuss our enterprise value. We do not want to include total, long, total current liabilities. We do want to include long-term debt. We do not want to include long-term debt under capital leases. And finally, we want to also not include deferred income taxes. So we will not include deferred income taxes. So those are the three items for our debt numbers that we want to include. Let's now see what the actual numbers are. Our commercial paper will be as follows. 3754, long-term debt due within one year, 4595, and long-term debt of 26429. So again, let's make sure that we take these three numbers and we now input those into our little cap table at the bottom. Again, that was 3754, 4595, and 26429. So in cell F34 total debt, you will say the following. You will say equals 3754 for our commercial paper plus 4595 for our long-term debt due within one year, the current portion, plus our long-term debt of 26429. Please make sure you have these correct numbers inputted and you do not make an accidental error in your entry. Hit enter and now you should see total debt of 34778. Our preferred stock, we actually do not have any, so you can just simply hit zero, enter to now get to minority interest. Minority interest will be considered a form of capital. Minority interest on our balance sheet is right on top of our shareless equity and that number is 1467. Once again, please feel free to go to our corporate valuation module when we talk about the concept of enterprise value and the sources of funds required for the business and to, for a fuller explanation of why we actually want to include minority interest in our numbers for our capital structure. So in cell F36, you would say 1467. Our total stockholders equity, flipping back to our balance sheet, is going to be at the bottom, 53. 171, our total shareholders' equity, 53,171. So please input that in cell F37. At this point now, you arrive in cell F38. We now want to calculate our total capitalization. Our total capitalization right now excludes cash. Otherwise, it will be total net capitalization, net of cash. So in cell F38, let me now show you yet another shortcut key. Please hit the Alt equals key. Please hit Alt, hold the Alt and hit equals at the same time. And this will give you the sum 
of the adjacent block of cells, clearly taking sum of cell F34 through F37, which indeed is what we want. You may hit enter to accept that, and our total book capitalization number is $89.416 billion. Now, we want to quickly calculate our percentages. What is the percent distribution of our debt, preferred, and minority interest of our capital structure? In cell F34, you want to say equals, sorry, in G34, you want to say equals left arrow to F34, divided by forward slash. And navigate yourself by hitting down and left to cell G38, our total capitalization figure. You may hit the F4 function key once to fully lock in this cell F38. This will now give you the percentage of total debt as a percent of total capitalization. You may hit control enter to stay at the same cell G34. You will now want to copy and paste this formula down. Recall that one of the keystrokes that we had learned already was control R, copy paste to the right. We can also do control D to copy paste down. So in cell G34, please hit shift down arrow to cell G37, thereby selecting all four cells from 30, G34 through G37 and hit control D as in down to get your percentages. However, since this is a pre-formatted file, you will note that in cell G37, you actually lose your underline. Please hit control U, control U to underline that cell. And in cell G38, we want to recalculate the percentages to indeed make sure they add up to 100%. So again, the other shortcut key we learned was Alt equals. Please hit the Alt equals keystroke at this point to now take the sum of G34 through G38, and that indeed should correctly add up to 100%. And if it doesn't, please take the time to go and figure out why, and to make sure you did not accidentally create a wrong reference or a wrong input. This wraps up our capitalization structure. Let us now quickly calculate a couple of key ratios. In cell L32, we want to calculate our total debt to total capitalization. So again, in cell L32, let's simply take the sum. You can actually type in equals sum, equals SUM, open parentheses, and hit left arrow and down arrow till you get to G34. And hit shift down arrow till you get to minority interest, G34 through G36, and hit enter. And now you have 40.5%. So again, the formula was as follows, equals sum of G34 through G36. This would take the sum of the three percentages of debt, preferred, as well as minority interest to get the percentage of your capital structure from your debt. Now we want to calculate total debt to EBITDA in cell L33. In cell L33, we want to simply take our total debt numbers divided by the current year 2005's EBITDA. Why 2005? Because our label here says take the actual 2005 figures. So in cell L33, we'll say equals sum open parentheses. And we want to select our three numbers from F34 through F30, uh, F34 through F36, close parentheses. That will give you our total sum of our debt. Then you want to say divided by, and you want to navigate yourself to the 2005 EBITDA number. 2005 EBITDA number is actually going to be in cell H15, and in cell H15, you will select that cell after you divide, and you will hit enter, and you will see that total debt over EBITDA is 1.6 times. Let me now zoom in so you can see the formula once again. It will be, again, the sum of the hard dollars of F34 through F36, the debt, divided by H15. The last number we want to calculate on this cell, on this spreadsheet, on this tab, rather, is net debt to EBITDA. Here we're getting a little bit fancier with our formulas. In cell F L34, you will say equals net debt to EBITDA. L34 equals the sum, again, open parentheses. Left arrow until you get to F34, shift down to select F34 through F36. Then you will say comma. You will say comma, let me show you the formula, comma, and then say negative, and give you your cell reference for the cash and equivalence number, which is 6414 in cell F. F32, close parentheses. This now gives you the sum of your net debt numbers. Again, you're taking the sum of your debt, taking away your cash number, close your parentheses, this is your net debt number. And again, you want to divide this net debt number divided by EBITDA, so again, divided by H15, navigate yourself up arrow and left to get to H15, and hit enter, and you see your net debt to EBITDA of 1.3 times. What is the significance of these numbers?